Last lesson, you learned about the printing press and you did some research on William Caxton, who brought the printing press to England. One of the first major titles of books that the printing press was responsible for releasing into the general public was Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. So in this lesson, we're going to have a look at um, the Canterbury Tales, um, what they were about, and then next lesson we'll have a look at Chaucer himself. The Canterbury Tales were a series of stories about different people who were going on a pilgrimage and they were going on a pilgrimage to the shrine of Thomas Becket in Canterbury, hence the Canterbury Tales. Thomas Becket was a friend of Henry II, King Henry II of England. Now, because Thomas Becket was Henry II's friend, Henry, as king, was able to appoint people to different positions. So at one point, he made Thomas Becket chancellor, which made him very powerful, and he had a lot of control over uh, the finances of the country. Now, after a while, um, the Archbishop of Canterbury died, and Henry II persuaded Thomas Becket to become the new Archbishop of Canterbury. So in the picture you can see Canterbury Cathedral, the inside of it. So Henry II had known Thomas Becket for a long time. He'd been his Chancellor and when the, the existing Archbishop died, Henry II said to Thomas Becket, I want you to do the job. I want you to be Archbishop of Canterbury. Now the King had an ulterior motive for putting Thomas Becket in as Archbishop of Canterbury. So we had another reason why he wanted um, Thomas to be the Archbishop. And that was this. In England at the time, there were two courts. And by courts, we mean people who were in charge of the general population, the people in power. And those two courts were the church and then the royal court. So Henry's in the royal court. So he has a lot of say. But then there's the church who also have a lot of say and a lot of control and a lot of influence. So what do you do? You put your mate at the head of the church. Henry wanted the church to toughen up a little bit and to support the royal court. So he put his friend in charge of the other powerful structure in the country. Now, what happened was unexpected. Rather than Thomas Beckett saying, OK, yeah, I'll do what you want, Henry because you're my friend, Thomas Becket refused to do what he was told by Henry II. And Thomas Becket looked at his role in a very moral way, in that he wanted to do what was right by God. He wanted to do what was right by the church. So he didn't want the interference from the royal court. Um, when Becket took the job, he gave up his lifestyle, which had previously been um, a very luxurious one. He had money, he had education, but he slept on the floor. He ate uh, bread, he drank only water. So he'd taken to this job um, in a really major way, which obviously Henry II didn't anticipate. Um, but Henry's plan basically failed because he couldn't get the control over the church that he wanted to get because Thomas Beckett had too much integrity to let him do that. So what do you do? You're a king. You've put your best friend in charge of a powerful institution in your country, one that you'd like to have a bit more control over, and your friend has turned around and said no. What do you do? You have him killed. Now, the story goes that Henry was quite vocal he, he talked a lot, shouted a lot about how he wanted Thomas Beckett dead. And the story goes that he was overheard and four knights, um, you can see there, went to Canterbury Cathedral and killed him with swords at the altar. So the story goes that Henry II didn't order it as such. However, we shall probably never know. So poor Thomas Beckett um, was killed at the altar. But because 
because of the way that he lived prior to his death and because of the way that he stood up for what was right and he stood up to the king, this is why the Pope uh, made him a saint and the Pope declared that he should be remembered as such. So this is a picture of the reconstructed shrine to Thomas Beckett that is in Canterbury Cathedral. And this exact shrine was where the pilgrims in the Canterbury Tales were traveling. So they were going on a pilgrimage to go and worship at the shrine of Thomas Beckett. So what is a pilgrimage? Well, I think you've done this in RE this year already, but in case you haven't, a pilgrimage is a visit to a place of significance. It's usually religious and it's usually a long way away. And a pilgrim is anyone who goes on that pilgrimage. So the idea is that if you are willing to travel a long way in order to show your respect, in order to worship, it shows that you are willing to go above and beyond. Um, and the whole idea of a pilgrimage is that you put yourself through probably quite a lot of um, hardship, quite a lot of struggle. But the idea being that by doing that, you're showing when you arrive, you're showing how much that place means to you or how much that person means to you. Now, in the Middle Ages, pilgrimages were thought to clear your sins because of the effort that they took and they would earn you brownie points as it were because travel was so dangerous and it took absolutely ages so in in the middle ages a pilgrimage was a very serious undertaking and that's exactly what's being described in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales a pilgrimage that takes a long time Right now, before we look at the Canterbury Tales themselves, your task today is to write about somewhere you would like to visit and why. So where would you go on a pilgrimage? Is there somewhere that you have always wanted to go? Is there a person that you really look up to? Is there a place that would be almost like a religious visit for you? Um, is there a religious place you would like to visit? Um, some people in the past, just to give you some ideas, some people have written about going to um, Old Trafford. Um, they've written about, that's a football ground, Manchester United's football ground. Some people have written about going to the Vatican. Um, people have written about going to the home of somebody famous who they admire. Um, so your job is to write about where you would like to visit and why. And as a second task, I want you to write about the type of people that you might encounter on that pilgrimage. So if you were to go on a pilgrimage to, for example, a certain football ground, what other people might be on that trip with you? If you were to go with a group, what other kinds of people might be on that trip? And the reason we're doing this is because what we'll do when we start reading the Canterbury Tales, we'll meet lots of different types of people who were on the pilgrimage to Thomas Beckett's shrine. And what Chaucer did was he made um, a record in these stories of the types of people that were around at the time. So it's almost like a time capsule reading it. You can see different positions in society, different types of jobs that existed. You can read about the clothes that people wore. It's, it is like going back in time to be told what sort of people um, were around and what kind of people you might encounter. So if you think about what you're writing today, if somebody in 400 years time was to look at the sort of people that you'd listed, what you need to think about is how they might represent 2021. So straight away, I can think of, for example, you might well have a YouTuber on your pilgrimage, which now it seems like nothing to us. But Chaucer wouldn't have known what you were talking about. And maybe in 400 years time, somebody wouldn't know what you were talking about. So think about on a modern pilgrimage, what sort of people would you expect to be on that pilgrimage with you now to answer and to do your um, to submit your work, if you could write, you can either do it as a list 
with sort of bullet point information about the different types of people. You could do pictures and illustrations with labels and things, um, or you could do full paragraph descriptions. Um, you can do as many as you like, but we would like a minimum of four different types of people. So four different types of people that would represent 2021. 